all points of junction uh, create a problem for us again. So they've started the recording now. I'll just repeat one line that I'd said earlier. And that is that when we talked about Gandanta, and when we are talking about Gandanta, if we are saying that the junctions of certain nakshatras and junctions of certain rashis, the fire and water rashis, if they are creating some problem for us, if they are these weak spots in the zodiac, these points in the zodiac which are creating trouble, then shouldn't all such junctures and all such points create problem? Why only those junctures? Why only between fire and water rashis? Why only between the Mercury and Ketu nakshatras? One would deduce that all junctions are problematic. So we are going to now talk about Sandhi. So what is a Sandhi? So Sandhi is basically, it is a joint. It is an interval. It is a pause. It is any junc a juncture between any two things. Sometimes they even form a union, like in Sanskrit grammar, you have two letters uh, uniting and then they form a yoga. Then they are not forming any dissidents over there. But otherwise, Sandhi means a transitional zone. Like, for example, dusk and dawn, uh, the time when uh, the, uh, the daytime ends and the nighttime begins, the twilight zone, the dusk, that is called a Sandhi time. So we call it Sandhya. Similarly, at dawn, as the night ends and the morning begins, right, that in between time when it's neither dark nor light, that is the important thing for you to remember. When it is neither dark nor light, which is at dawn and at dusk, we call it Sandhya. And the word Sandhya is from Sandhi. And they say at that time, one should do the Gayatri Mantra. In fact, uh, they tell us that there are four such junctures in the day and according to the movement on the sun, and they're all called Sandhyas. And the Gayatri Mantra should be recited then because those are the most vulnerable time. That's why the Sandhyas, these Sandhi times are ruled usually by Mercury also, you know, who are dual, neither this nor that neither A nor B, a somewhat a dual stage. So we can say, you know, that if it is a time which is like dusk and dawn, neither day nor night, we can say these are, Sandhis are transitional zone, right? Like a Sandhya is a transition between daylight and nighttime. Similarly, a transition zone can happen between two Bhavas, it can happen between two Rashis, and it can happen between two Nakshatras. Now, when you have borders between nations, there is something called a no man's land. Any of you, those of you belong to armed forces background would be very, very familiar with this. There is a strip of land between the borders. So it's not as if it's just a line and you kind of hop across the line and you are, you know, either India or Pakistan. No, it's not like that. Or, uh, you know, or Italy and France. It's not like that. There is usually a little space uh, between the borders of two nations. And this is known as a no man's land. You may look it up. The Between the borders of two nations, it's a no man's land. And this no man's land is a space which is not a space for anybody. It is not, say, if, if I take India and Pakistan, it's not even India space, neither it is Pakistan space. Right. If I'm doing the border between Switzerland and, say, Italy, there'll be a line like that, which is which doesn't belong to either of the nation. That's why it's called a no man's land, neither here nor there, but a kind of a merger, a transitory point for both the lands. Now, we are not going to discuss too much about the transition between bhavas, the transition zones between bhavas, because that is much more pre prevalent where the bhava chalit chakra comes into place. But for example, rashis, right? What happens? when there is a borderline, when one Rashi is changing into the other Rashi. So can we call that? What is called? That is called a Rashi Sandhi. Okay. What happens uh, 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 in a Rashi Sandhi is that the sun god then actually changes his death clothes. Okay. So how is the sun god changing the clothes? The sun god in the different Rashis is known as the Aditya. He takes the form of the 12 Adityas and he moves from one Rashi to another Rashi. 
But when it changes from one Rashi to another, okay, he then changes his clothes, the color of his clothes, the ornaments he's wearing, his garbs, any astras he may have in his hand, he changes his clothes. He changes his whole clothes and appearance and then moves into another Rashi. And that's why then he's in a form of a different Aditya. The day he changes his clothes is called Sankranti. All of you know that, right? That is the day he changes his clothes. Because he's changes, changing his clothes, he's not available. Because he's not available, that day is kind of a sunless day. And that is why Sankrantis are uh, problematic muhurta times. You would not want to start anything. You want a Sankranti, you wouldn't want to like, definitely Paul would not like to start his conference on a Sankranti. You wouldn't like to get married on a Sankranti. For spiritual activity is fine. For any kind of material activity, the Sankranti is problematic because the sun god is nowhere in the sky. He's gone to change his clothes. So if he's going to now change between, say, uh, 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 Libra and uh, uh, say Scorpio, all right, or between Virgo and Libra, if he wants to change on the day of the Sankranti, he's neither in Virgo nor in Libra. The Sankranti between say Libra, uh, uh, say, uh, you know, from one month to the other month, he's neither in one sign nor the other sign. He is transiting from Cancer to Leo on Sankranti day, he's neither in Cancer nor in Leo. What is that? That's the no man's land where you are neither here nor there, you're not available. You've gone away to change your clothes. So he's not there that day. He's not accessible that day. And of course, if you look up, you can see him, but he's not accessible that day. Get the point. He doesn't belong to any Rashi then. So that is like the Rashi Sandhi. So Sankranti is very much like a Rashi Sandhi. So what happens when a graha is in Rashi Sandhi? It kind of loses its power to do any good for its own house, all right? And it subsequently destroys his house. For example, if I have a Mangal in Rashi Sandhi and Mangal is my ninth Lord. So Mangal then loses its power to do anything for the ninth house and it will subsequently destroy my ninth house. Okay, this is an example. And in a bhava sandhi, which is more for the bhava chali chakra, so we are not so concerned about a bhava sandhi. We are more concerned about a rashi sandhi and, and most importantly about nakshatra sandhi, which is what we are going to discuss today. But a planet in a bhava sandhi will be concerned only about saving its own house and it will not be bothered about anything else. So what are we getting from this? That sandhis are very nebulous. They are very, very nebulous. And grahas in these sandhis between rashis and nakshatras, they have a very peculiar nature. And astrologers have so far not been able to throw light on this peculiar nature of planets. Hence, they usually uh, you know, stay away from discussing this topic. They stay very far away from discussing sandhis because it's difficult to judge, it's difficult to gauge, it's difficult to throw light because planets assume a very peculiar nature, okay? And this peculiar nature of the graha obviously has a very uh, a serious impact uh, on a person's life. Hence, we can say that these no man land, somebody who doesn't belong to anybody, they are fuzzy areas, they are gray areas. They are neither black nor white. Fuzzy because nothing is defined. And hence planets when placed in them become very, very fragile. They actually make a native's life very troublesome and they will torment the native right through its life and will be unable to provide the results of their bhavas or rashis. I gave you an example that I have mangal in zero degrees, zero minutes. Uh, of, uh, you know, of uh, beginning of um, uh, Taurus. So it's a Rashi Sandhi between Aries and Taurus and it lords my second uh, uh, Aries and Scorpio. So wherever, whatever Bhava Aries and Scorpio are representing, which is my second and ninth Bhava, it is not going to give me results of that Bhava. It is going to deny me the results of that Bhava unless I do some serious remedy related to Mangal. Okay, so we are saying, now this photograph I have of you is a photograph of an actual no man's land between borders. All these no man lands look like this, complete, you can see uh, desolate areas. And uh, 
during the World War, Germany actually built its famous trenches in the no man's land areas. Now, between Rashi Sandhis and Bhava Sandhis, the most important is Nakshatra Sandhis. And the reason Nakshatra Sandhis are the most important because Nakshatras play havoc in our mind. It takes our mind for a dance. And Nakshatra Sandhi can happen in anybody's life because it's a juncture between any two Nakshatras. We are then not just looking at Gandanta points or points between fire, water, Rashis or any such thing. Any point when one nakshatra begins and another nakshatra ends, that can be called a nakshatra sandhi. Okay, now let's go deeper into that concept. So as I said, sandhi means an interval. It can mean a pause. It can mean the end of something and the beginning of something. You know, when one yuga ends and another yuga begins, it is called a yuga sandhi. And it definitely means a joint, just the way Ganda also means a joint. But I deliberately did not cover this yesterday because I didn't want to duplicate. Just like the joints of the bones in our body. All right. We have many, many joints. See, this is a this is called a pivotal joint. Then this is called a hinge joint. This is called a saddle joint. These are all the various joints in our body. And these joints, as I had mentioned to you yesterday, are uh, delicate areas, all right? And that's why we are susceptible to, that those areas are susceptible to breakages, okay? They are susceptible to breakages and they are susceptible to, um, uh, we suffer arthritis and we uh, suffer a lot of pains, okay? Because these areas are so, so, uh, delicate and fragile. You know, women, when they grow older in their 50s and perhaps even in their 60s, uh, you know, their bone, the porosity of their bone, you know, becomes a little bit questionable, becomes weaker. And as a result, they are very prone to fracture and breaking their bones. Where do they break their bones? They break their bones in all the joints, right? So like the delicate junctures of the skeletal system. So Hence, nakshatra sandhis occur between the junctures of each nakshatra, just like the way this is a joint, right? This is a pivotal joint. This is a hinge joint, right? This is a saddle joint, just like these junctures. Each nakshatra has a juncture between them. Every nakshatra, every 27 or 28 of them will have junctures between them. So these are intersection points of each nakshatra. And these points are extremely dangerous. And the reason that they are dangerous is because nakshatra actually rules vayu and prana. And nakshatra rules, affects our minds. When a graha is in a nakshatra, via that nakshatra, that graha is able to impact our mind. We have all learned that grahas do grahana. So, but how do the grahas do grahana? The grahas are able to grasp our mind or do grahana to our mind simply by via media of the nakshatra. It is empowered by the nakshatra. The nakshatra is the one which is giving it its light. So the nakshatra can create a storm in the mind. Mark my word, it creates a storm in the mind. So if we have already discussed right? That a graha in a sandhi is very fragile. A graha in a sandhi can torment me my whole life. A graha in a sandhi can create problems for me in my whole life. Then obviously the graha in these nakshatra sandhis are going to agitate my mind, are going to disturb my mind. When it is a graha like moon, and at birth, moon is in a nakshatra sandhi, there will be dangers at birth. And the nature of these dangers, we can then ascertain from the navamsha lagna. Why from the navamsha lagna? Because the navamsha lagna actually is our physical birth or our janma. Now, nakshatra sandhis are pure vayu afflictions. That is the reason why today I did the Mrityunjaya Mantra three times rather than I did it once yesterday because we are dealing with very severe Vayu here. So, so we would say that the Sandhi is actually more serious than a Gandanta. All right. It's much more serious than a Gandanta. For example, that the Bhava, a Graha placed in a Nakshatra Sandhi, the Bhava it lords, 
there may be some problem. And what gets affected is the vayu and the prana of the person. Okay, for example, if seventh lord is in nakshatra sandhi, a spouse may have breathing difficulties. A fifth lord in a nakshatra sandhi, maybe one of the children born may have some oxygen deficiency during birth while labor is going on. And as a result, the child may become autistic or have other mental challenges. Now, what happens if Lagna Lord itself is in Nakshatra Sandhi? Sometimes, you know, the Lagna itself can be in Nakshatra Sandhi also. Hmm. When the Lagna itself is in a Nakshatra Sandhi, the native can suffer. Actually, then really the native suffers head injuries, cerebral strokes and things like this. And moon in Nakshatra Sandhi, as I already mentioned to you, obviously danger to the life of a person at birth. Okay, so when moon is in a nakshatra sandhi, it is very inauspicious and it can be fatal uh, and fatal and dangerous for longevity, for health, for work. So moon at all, at any point, we do not want in a nakshatra sandhi. All right, so right now, till now, you are only occupied with moon in Gandanta and that also only in Mula Gandanta. So Pandits only talk about Mula Gandanta, right? Chandra is in Mula Gandanta, do puja, okay, that's because it's a prarabdha. But here we are not just talking about any Gandanta, we are talking about all nakshatra sandhis. Any nakshatra juncture, if the Chandra is over there, it's very inauspicious and it can be a threat to a person's longevity. Okay, so regular, rigorous uh, remedy is uh, required over there. Now, can we determine what is the source of these uh, 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 source of these uh, need uh, of these uh, dangers? What is the nature of these dangers? Can we determine that? Yes, you can by the nature of the nakshatra itself. For example, I've given you Shatabhishaj nakshatra. The devata is Varuna, and hence there is a possibility that you may have dangers from water. Now your question may be that why did I pick up the devata? Because nakshatras are defined by the devatas. Uh, if you look into the Vedas, right, in the uh, uh, Taittiriya, uh, in the Yajur Vedas, uh, or even in the Rig Veda, they sometimes uh, did not ever refer to nakshatras by their names. They would refer to nakshatras by the devata. So they will not say Shatabhishaj, they will say Varuna. So they will say that while moon was with Varuna or moon was in Varuna, that's the way the Vedic language they talked. And the reason being, uh, the devatas actually resided in the nakshatras. Each nakshatra is actually an abode of the devatas. And the devatas are the word devatas from divu meaning light. They are the ones who are actually infusing light into nakshatras. And they are the ones the cause by which a nakshatra becomes a source of light. Because if a nakshatra is a light, is like a little sun, who is giving that light to them? It has been given by the devatas, the divus. And that light is then given, by, given to the grahas who are then doing what they have to do. Okay, so if a nakshatra has, is more fiery by nature, maybe some asphyxiation problem may come in over there. You know, from uh, when you are exposed to a lot of smoke, which comes from fire. So maybe asphyxiation problems may come out there. Okay, so the source can be determined. So when you see it, you have to spend some time and you have to look into the nakshatra. If you understand, and I believe Visti is going to be having a full day a workshop on the nakshatra. So I'm sure he's going to be talking about the nature of the nakshatras, the basic nature of them. So you should make a note of all that so that when you are seeing a nakshatra sandhi, you can apply those things. And also learn the devatas of the nakshatra. That will also give you. Here, Varuna is giving us the key. Right? Shatabhishaj is not giving us the key. The Varuna is giving us the key. And Varuna is considered the lord of the oceans. He's considered the lord of the entire Jalatattva, Jaladhipatai. Okay? So, what I'm going to do is, we are going to spend some time uh, looking at this through horoscopes. Because if we do not look at it through horoscopes properly, we will not really understand this. So uh, the first thing that you need to understand is that uh, it is uh, 
Nakshatra Sandhi means it's a very pure Vayu affliction. Okay. The remedy, of course, is Mithunjai Mantra. It is a very serious problem. Okay. Hence, uh, you know, ensure you do your Mithunjai Mantras for protection when dealing with this topic. And as I said that I feel this topic is a little bit more serious than just those three points of Gandanta itself. Now, it's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Sitting and calculating the nakshatra sandhis. You're going to take the whole year to do it. And provided that you know, you're know you okay with your maths. So you can see that in Sri Jyoti star, they have a sandhi table. Okay, it's called in-gap sandhi table. And uh, so it's very easy for that. So we are only obviously going to look at nakshatra sandhis, not going to look at lagna sandhis, because for lagna sandhis, you need to be very sure of the birth time and the lagna degrees. So, you know, you can do it for our own charts or charts of near and dear ones. But for public figures, uh, we are not 100% sure of the exact time or the exact degree. So the lagna degree may differ even sometimes by just uh, some few seconds, you know, you can move in and out of nakshatra sandhi. So this has helped us a lot. And we are going to try and understand Okay, as I said, it's a very difficult topic. So we're going to try and understand that whether, uh, you know, we can actually uh, find some correlation. So what I did that, you know, there were public figures whom I roughly knew about their lives and I knew what had happened. And I said, I think this person may have Nakshatra Sandhi. So I tried and I got some of the charts. So part of my 50% of my uh, query was correct and 50% was not that correct because they had other problems. You will also see that many of these people also have grahas in those Gandanta nakshatras that we discussed yesterday. Okay, now we're going to start with, uh, you know, one of my favorite poets, that's uh, uh, Lord Alfred Taris, uh, Tennyson. He was the first Baron of Ten Tennyson as well. Um, I grew up at a time where when we studied English, we really had to study all the romantic poets of England from Keats and Shelley and Byron and Tennyson. And Tennyson's uh, many poetries were my favorite, like the Lady of the Shallot. So I thought that I would um, do Tennyson's chart. And Tennyson was the poet laureate of uh, UK, of England. And he uh, lived during the time of Victorian, Queen Victoria. So you can say that he was a poet of the Victorian era. And he was a, a you know, he was a poet laureate. And uh, he was, of course, absolutely very famous, very well known. And if you ever not read his poetry, I would really suggest go and read The Lady of Shalott and read In Memoriam. So... Tennyson had three brothers, you know, I think most of them older to him, at least two of them were older to him. And Tennyson's father uh, did a lot to look after his children. And he really saved money. He was very keen that they got properly educated. So Alfred Tennyson was actually sent to Cambridge to study. All right. But what happened when he was there to study? Suddenly, his father died. And when his father died, his life really changed drastically because his grandfather discovered that his father actually was running a huge debt. And so they did not suddenly have any money. So Tennyson could not continue studying in Cambridge. And by the way, while he was in Cambridge, he got awarded the very uh, prestigious Chancellor's Gold Medal. And he was in Trinity College in Cambridge and he had to leave because of the paucity of funds and go back to his hometown. And he never completed his university degree, which is a very, very uh, sad thing. And once he came back, uh, he had the entire responsibility of taking care of his mother because his elder brothers, he had three brothers, his elder brothers were all mentally challenged. They all had mental illnesses, including one of them was institutionalized in a mental asylum. All right. And uh, all this affected him so deeply. Uh, he, uh, the poetries that he wrote, including this poem that I talked about, faced a huge amount of criticism at that time. And as a result, for 10 years, he did not publish. His Arura was so badly affected. 
he did not publish for 10 years and he only came back and then again rose to the heights that we know him to be. So he has a nakshatra gandanta, if you can see here, it is Rahu. This is the way I can show you how to use the table. If you're looking at nakshatra, you can see Rahu is in a nakshatra gandanta. Now, who is Rahu? Rahu is his atmakaraka, which means the atmakaraka graha always gives you a lot of challenges, okay, a lot of problems. And it is also the ninth lord, okay? Now, what did I tell you about his life? I said that just when his father died, that's when everything changed for him, right? So ninth house is to do with father. Now, what happened with the father's death? Because the money issues came, he couldn't complete his degree at Cambridge. So ninth house has also had education. So that also got impacted. And he actually landed up, you know, then focusing on his mother. Now, if you see his ninth lord in Atmakaraka Rahu is in Nakshatra Sandhi, it is at six degrees, 30 minutes of Tula. Okay, here you go. In Tula Rashi, six degrees, 30 minutes. Hmm? Now, where is the Nakshatra Sandhi coming in? You may wonder. So at six degrees, 40 minutes Tula, Chitra Nakshatra is actually ending and Swati Nakshatra is starting. All right, so at 6.40, Chitra's ending and his Rahu is at 6.30. So just by 10 minutes, are you seeing how it is at Sandhi? Just by 10 minutes, it is uh, in uh, Chitra. Within 10 minutes, it's crossing over to Swati Nakshatra. So it is, at the, it is in Chitra, but it's in the juncture of Chitra and Swati. And in this 30 minutes uh, kind of a zone, okay, it's, it's actually neither Chitra nor Tula. It's neither Chitra nor Tula. That's where it is stuck. Now, if I still want to say that technically it is Chitra because it's still 30 minutes, then in his chart, there was something very interesting that came up. The Lord of Chitra is Mangal, right? And you can see Mangal is with Rahu in the fifth house. And there is a kind of a, uh, you know, battle. Rahu and Mangal is the quintessential uh, yoga for uh, Kujastambhana and as well for, uh, you know, they kind of battle each other. It's, it can be a Vijaya yoga or it can be a Kujastambhana. And you can see that Mangal, now it, this has cropped up in a few charts, not all charts, where the uh, Lord of the Nakshatra is somehow involved. And you can see that Mangal is also the 11th Lord over there. His elder brothers were afflicted. His elder brothers, I said, were all mentally challenged, with one of them being in a mental asylum. Okay, so we can see that this Rahu, which is the ninth Lord, and it is the Atma Karaka, gave him and tormented him for most of his life. And this was triggered with the death of his father. The first thing that happened was he couldn't complete his education at the prestigious Cambridge University at Trinity College. And he had to come and take care of his mother. And you can see Rahu is also co-lord of the fourth house. And there is Mrityupada over there. So he had to take care of his mother because his father created a mess with the uh, with the finances and also the brothers being mentally challenged could not really do anything. So it's a very, very interesting case. So you can see that Rahu's kind of done a Kujastambhana out there. All right. And it affected his Arura. If you see, this is third from the Arura Lagna. So he went through hell. He wrote this very beautiful poem and uh, he was completely uh, uh, sort of, you know, taken to the docks for that. And as a result, he was so mentally affect, aff affected, he did not publish, though he continued to write essays and things like that. He did not publish uh, for a rather 10 years. Okay. And uh, so that is a, uh, it's a, so you can see how this nakshatra, that to ninth lord, which is a bhagyesha, ninth lord is a very important graha, and it is atma karaka, how it gave him so many challenges, how it turned his destiny around. But of course, as I said, eventually Atma Karaka did make him king and eventually became the poet laureate of UK and is one of the most celebrated poets from the uh, Romantic movement. Okay. Now, let's examine uh, another one. So here what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to examine Chitra Nakshatra out here. 
chitra is to do with somebody who paints pictures. It's a chitrakar, an artist, right? Somebody who's very, very creative. So he was a very creative person and his poetry was like, were like paintings. His poetry were absolutely like paintings. It is really Shukra. Shukra is called, uh, one name for Shukra is Kavi. He is the poet. He has Venus in his 10th house over there. And although because it's in Mithun Rashi, it will give some Graha Dosha, but that is to do with his relationships. But Shukra bestowed him, right? It bestowed him with all the beauty uh, he could paint with his words. When you read the Lady of Shalot and his other poetry, you can know that all the poetry he did, that's what happened. Now, one more thing happened. This 11th house, the Mangala's 11th Lord is not just siblings, but it is also friends, right? So he had a very close friend called Arthur Hallam. And Arthur Hallam came to live with him, live with them in the house. In the process, he fell in love with uh, Tennyson's sister and then married her. But Arthur Hallam died very tragically, had a very sudden death and he died uh, when he had gone overseas. And when Tennyson heard about this, he was completely heartbroken. So all of this happened together. Arthur Hallam, his dear friend's death, his brother's going into the mental asylum, losing his father, not able to do his degree, looking after his mother, this whole thing and that uh, whole attack on his Arura. Right, a whole attack on his Arura and uh, by which he almost couldn't publish, etc., etc. So that also is 11th Lord is also friend. This had a very big impact on him. One of his most celebrated poems is called In Memoriam. You know, that was in my school syllabus. So as I said, you know, this is a little bit of personal thing for me to do his chart. So In Memoriam is one of his most celebrated poems. And the In Memoriam poetry was... Uh, for Arthur Hallam. So you can read them and you know, you'll know you know, understand what it means. See what this Nakshatra Sandhi did. Atma Karaka Bhagyesha, it destroyed his 11th house. All right, because Mangal, the Lord of the Nakshatra is the Lord of 11th house and friends and siblings and conjoined Rahu and got destroyed by Rahu actually. There was a Kujas Thambana. His ninth house got destroyed completely from higher education to father and everything. All right, so it's a very, very uh, interesting case. Now let's move on to another example. I've got like 10 examples. Let me see how much we can cover. Now, this is a very different personality. You people may have heard about him. He is uh, Acharya Rajneesh, who was very famous for the Rajneesh movement, is also known as Osho. Uh, for those of you who may not know, you can Google search him. He was one of India's most popular self-styled uh, gurus of the 80s, uh, so late 70s, 80s. Just the, uh, and he was very, very, very famous, both in India as well as abroad. He had a lot of followers. He had his ashram. The peculiarity of his thing is that his whole methods were very hedonistic. And uh, he pursued the path of the Ajivikas. And uh, what he did was uh, he uh, used sex and promiscuity as a tool for spiritual, uh, you know, for a tool for spiritual uh, path. So where the all the devotees would be encouraged to have group orgies and things like that as a method of, you know, that was a spiritual method, whatever that method would be. So obviously, as you know, that, that brought in a huge amount of contradiction. He, when the Indian government launched on him because, you know, there was also financial irregularities, he ran away to the US. But soon the US government also got wise on him. He had a very, very huge estate and ashram and then he was imprisoned in the US and then from US also, he uh, ran away here to India. And when he ran, came back to India again, he had a little ashram. He was very unwell. He really fell sick from time to time to time. And he said, well, you know, uh, I was poisoned in the American prisons. Now you can see that Mercury is in Rashi Sandhi, right? Mercury is his Lagna Lord and is his fourth, fourth Lord. And uh, uh, Mercury is actually placed uh, in 13 degrees, 30 minutes of uh, Dhanurashi, right? 
So 13 degrees, 30 minutes Dhanu. Now exactly at 1320, Mula Nakshatra ends and Purva Ashara Nakshatra begins. So barely has Mula ended and Purva Ashara started. <clears throat> so technically we will say that that planet is in Purva Ashara, but it was born between the, between the Sandhi of Mula and Sandhi of Purva Ashara in the sign of Dhanu. Now he does have planets in the uh, Gandanta nakshatras. You can see Mars is in Mula Gandanta. You can see Surya is in uh, uh, Jeshta. You can see Jupiter is in Aslesha. The Atma Karaka is in Aslesha. All right, the Bhratri Karaka, uh, uh, Saturn, uh, not Bhratri Karaka, Saturn, Bhratri Karaka, Sun is in Jeshta. So those Gandanta nakshatras are already there. And along with the Gandanta nakshatra, he has this Mercury which is really at a Sandhi point. If you see the conjunctures are very, very minor. Just by 10 minutes, we are getting it. Now, Mercury is Lagna Lord. That is the self, that is the health. And Mercury is also the fourth Lord. Now in the fourth house, you can see there is Ketu in Maranakarakstana. Ketu is the sixth Lord who has gone to the Maranakarakstana in the fourth house. You can see that also uh, Gulika and Mandi are also over there. So a lot of poison intake. Maybe what he talked about, perhaps it was correct. That Mandi and Gulika talk about poison intake. So he was insisting that he was po poisoned in the US. Uh, US authorities poisoned him in the US prisons. Because when he came back, he was falling sick all the time. He was uh, falling sick and he was uh, very, very sick. But uh, so many planets in these Gandanta nakshatras and Mercury in Sandhi. Now, if you see Mercury's placement, Mercury is also in a Maranakarakstana. Okay. It is not combust, but it is in Maranakarakstana and afflicted by a bunch of planets. Now, yesterday we talked that when grahas are in these Gandanta nakshatras, then we have to see the placement of Mercury and Ketu, isn't it? So when I look at the placement of Mercury, I see Mercury is in Maranakarakstana, and I also see that Mercury is in a nakshatra sandhi. Ketu is also in MKS, but Mercury as the dispositor of, say, a Jeshta and a Slesha, Mercury is in MKS. It is in Nakshatra Sandhi. Okay? So Mercury is not good at all. Hence, all these grahas, which are there in these Gandanta Nakshatras, his entire experience was really horrible. In the sense, you can understand because, you know, it was, he was here in India, then to get chased by the Indian government, running away to the U.S., and then being chased by the U.S. government and being imprisoned there, then chasing back again, and this kind of hedonistic lifestyle that he led. So you can see it very, very clearly. So because of the condition of Mercury, we can say that is Atma Karaka Jupiter in Aslesha. We can say Bhratri Karaka Surya in Jeshta Nakshatra. All right. All this will have a very, very uh, negative impact. The gurus, Bhatri Karaka is the guru, will have a negative impact for the simple reason that Mercury, the Lord, is also very badly compromised in Nakshatra Sandhi and in Maranakarakasthana. And the other, other Nakshatra Ketu is also in Maranakarakasthana with Gulika and Mandi. Are you getting a little sense how the whole life is being troubled? All right, you're getting. So these are different kind of charts. Okay, uh, what has happened to these people is well documented and very well known. And I'm just giving you the headlines because I, of course, can't go into biographies right now. Now, we are going to look at uh, some more charts of the British royalty. Yesterday we did of the uh, Indian prime ministers, Indira Gandhi and her two sons, uh, Sanjay and Rajiv Gandhi. Today we take a look at uh, the King of England. Now, His Majesty the King, we, yesterday we did a chart, he's our new king, right? And uh, you can see that we discussed he also had a whole bunch of planets in the Gandanta Nakshatras, whole bunch. But we primarily spoke that uh, about the 10th uh, Lord uh, uh, Mangal, 10th Lord and Amatya Karaka Mangal being in Jeshtha Nakshatra, we actually spoke about that. And we said that Mangal is not only 10th Lord, it is also 5th Lord. Okay, now you can see that uh, 
Mangal is in the nakshatra of um, uh, obviously Mercury. And we have saw that Mercury, Ketu and Sana together in Tula Rashi. And we saw this in the horoscopes of many people that who had a lot of grahas in these Gandanta nakshatra, somehow Sun, Mercury, Ketu were together. And again, once again, Mercury and Ketu are in Marana Karaka Sthana in the fourth house. All right. And it is conjoined the sun. So Mercury and Ketu are not well placed. We know that what happened, he was the longest standing heir for 70 years. He waited in the wings to be king till he became queen, uh, king last month. And uh, we also know that he has quite a troublesome uh, life where his Arura is concerned because this combination is in the Arura, the sun, Mercury, Ketu. So what transpired because, you know, he uh, didn't really... Uh, dot his eyes and cross his T's and he tended to say whatever he would say. He was very interested in Eastern practices. So uh, into yoga, into meditation, into doing mantras. Charles was very, very, the king was involved in this in a very big way. And he was also very, is, I would say, very spiritually minded. So he would like to hang around, uh, you know, not just uh, Indian or Asian uh, spiritual practitioners, but also members of the clergy. So he was criticized for that because it did not fit into the regular Anglo-Saxon model. Then he was a very great or is a very great champion of the uh, climate convention and anything to do with the environment. Now that he's head of state, he is not, this is what Paul was trying to bring up yesterday, that he is not permitted actually to comment, make any commentary on his certain stands and positions that he held. So the prime minister of UK has forbidden him to go to the COP27 meeting. And if he was not king, he would have gone there. Now, the very interesting thing, and then, of course, his marriage with his first wife, Princess Diana, that is a very open knowledge to everybody, where he's painted in not in a good uh, light at all. And then her controversial death, you know, she had a terrible car accident in France. So all that created, added more and more negativity to his Arura. And uh, this also impacted the relationship on his two children. So where the first son was concerned, uh, you know, this was kind of um, mitigated by uh, Prince William's wife. But where the second boy is concerned, the second boy was not able to handle it much before his marriage. And he has a very bad relationship with the younger boy. Now, if you see Shukra for him is in uh, Nakshatra Sandhi. So Shukra is in 23 degrees, 15 minutes of Kanyarashi. Okay. Now, 23 degrees, 15 minutes of Kanya. Now, at 23 degrees, 20 minutes, but after five minutes, five minutes is nothing. Hasta, Nakshatra ends and Chitra commences. So he's between Hasta and Chitra. All right, in the no man's land, <clears throat> between Hasta and Chitra. Just look at the difference, okay? This is uh, 23, 15, and this is 23, 20. Just a five minutes kind of difference. And who is this Venus? The Venus is his fourth Lord and the Venus is his 11th Lord. That means this Lord of the Arura Lagna Venus is the one who is in the Nakshatra Sandhi. Venus also represents our spouses, all right? And you will see that there is a Parivartana here between Venus and Mercury. So once that Parivartana took place, uh, the Arura actually improved, I would say, which means that he married his childhood sweetheart, which is uh, Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall. And Camilla, uh, people did not like her at, in the beginning, including other members of the royal family did not like her. But as of now, people have accepted her and she is a rock solid support to him through all this transitionary phase. So this Parivartana, is very crucial, which is brought about by Venus, by which he is able to come out of the Nakshatra Sandhi. Okay, I will not talk about the other Gandanta points because we did that yesterday. Now, when I uh, now note, uh, Venus is lording the fourth lord, which is his Arura, and Venus is also the eleventh lord, which means that it also refers to siblings. Now, before it refers to any sibling, 
I can go back and show actually the sibling's horoscope first. Uh, this is his sibling, Prince Andrew, which is the Duke of York. Now, he has, this is the brother immediately after him, and he's never had a good relationship with Prince Andrew. And, you know, there is a lot of rumors that go around. The British press absolutely, you know, uh, feeds the minds of the public by doling out all kinds of stories. And there was a story that, you know, that he was actually conspiring to throw uh, King Charles out so that he never became monarch. For all you know, it may be true, okay? But they, in temperament, uh, in their values, in their ethics, they were two completely different people. So very recently last year, Prince Andrew got involved in a sex scandal uh, with somebody called Jeffrey Epstein from UK. And it was a pretty big thing. And he actually made an out of court settlement over there. But as a result, his mother had to ask him to step back from all royal duties. He couldn't represent the queen, the former queen in any royal duties anymore. All right, so he was just plain Prince Andrew, Duke of York but he uh, could not undertake or represent, he could not wear his military clothes or any such thing. So, and between both of them, they have a pretty bad relationship. So you can see that the Shukra, which was there actually in his chart, which is also the 11th Lord, uh, the 11th Lord also shows sibling. And we see that Prince Andrew also has a Nakshatra Sandhi. Now, very interestingly, the Nakshatra Sandhi, the planet is Surya, and Surya is the second lord. So what is getting uh, destroyed over here is Surya. So basically, the second lord's sun is in six degrees, 42 minutes Kumbha. Now look at this, exactly in two minutes, in six degrees, 40 minutes, Dhanishta ends and Shatabhishad starts, right? It's absolutely, I mean, it almost feels they are the, really the same uh, uh, nakshatra. I mean, two minutes is really nothing. So when Dhanishta is ending and Shatabhishaj is starting, so he's really in the border of Dhanishta and Shatabhishaj. That is the second Lord's son. And son, of course, the natural signification of son is your, uh, you know, the royalty, the throne, anything to do with the royal stuff. And uh, also you can see that Son is the second lord. So the, the family really shunned him. The family shunned him in a very, very big way. And uh, he was, uh, the entire family really kind of wouldn't even acknowledge him. And uh, at the same time, he really lost anything to do with the throne and royalty. The Surya represents both the throne as well as the royalty. So he literally lost all connections with the royalty. So the son really has tormented him, him hugely, the second lord in the eighth house. Okay. Now we go back to doing the, uh, the horoscope of the son of King Charles. And I'm going to point out something very, very interesting to you. Now, in Prince Harry, this is the younger son who has this huge issue with his father because of all the reasons we discussed. And you can see that once again, Venus is in Nakshatra Sandhi. So Venus is in 23 degrees, 28 minutes of Virgo. And at 23 degrees, 20 minutes, Hasta is ending and Chitra is starting. So 23, 20 minutes, Hasta ends, Chitra starts. And he was born in about 23, 28 of Chitra of, uh, of this nakshatra. All right. So he is in, if I'm not mistaken, he's in Chitra nakshatra. So just about eight minutes was the border where he was born over there. Chitra nakshatra. Again, once again, we are talking about the arts and all this kind of things. And who is Venus for him? Venus again is 10th Lord and is third Lord. And Venus is also the Amatya Karaka. So his career really has gone for a six because he himself has said he wants to step up from royalty, that he wants to distance himself from the royal family. He does not want to be associated with the royal family. All right. And uh, because of this, uh, he had to give up his titles. The titles were also denied to him because he wanted to move away. So he had not only the titles, but also the finances, the source of finances. He practically lost everything out there. The 10th house, we can see that he lost out. So recently when he attended the funeral, because he was not representing the uh, queen, the ER label had to be re removed from his suit. And the media went crazy, just taking that as a 
opportunity and trying to create more drama. Oh, he was upset because that was taken. Well, he very well knows why it was taken out. All right. So the and the third lord over there, brothers again. So his relationship with his very beloved brother, Prince William, is trained beyond recognition. All right. See how both the relationship with the elder brother and the work is very badly affected for him. And I want to show something. When we discuss King Charles's chart, see his Venus is in 23 degrees, 15 minutes. Right. But it is in Hasta. Because Hasta is still 20 minutes. So his is 23 degrees, 15 minutes of Hasta. And immediately after that, this boy is in 23 degrees, 28 minutes. But then, you know, it's crossed over to Chitra. So they are really at a juncture of Hasta, Chitra, uh, you know, a gray area, transition zone between Hasta and Chitra. So it would be very interesting if we studied Hasta and Chitra in more detail to understand literally the same planet Venus is literally one on top of the other between King Charles's horoscope and King Harry's horoscope. I hope uh, this is your, it's more or less clear to you. I'm trying to draw out how these nakshatra sandhis show the problems they have had in their lives. Now, okay, we are going to move away uh, from the royal family and we're going to look at the chart of Alan Leo. So Alan Leo was a British uh, theosophist and he was a British astrologer and he was known as the father of modern Western astrology. Lee, Alan Liu and his wife had also visited India and he has also studied Vedic astrology. Now, uh, very interestingly, you will see that he has an Akshatra Sandhi of Jupiter. Jupiter is his fifth lord, right? And uh, Jupiter happens to be in 16 degrees, 31 minutes of Karka. And in 40 minutes of Karka, his Pushya nakshatra ends and Aslesha starts. So it's kind of, you know, the transition zone between Pushya and Aslesha. Now, who is uh, Jupiter in his chart? Jupiter happens to be the fifth lord in his horoscope. Now, what happened to Alan Liu was he was actually imprisoned twice in 1914 and 1917. Not in prison, but there was the, uh, the British government at the time filed a case against him and he faced these severe charges of because of fortune telling. In those days, fortune telling was a very serious crime. So because of fortune telling, he was, uh, you know, had two very, very uh, disturbing legal cases where he actually attained, he had to go to court, there were trials that were on, and all this affected him so much that eventually uh, he died within a few months of the uh, second litigation that transpired. So there was a lot of problems that he did face in life. He really fought to establish astrology uh, in the world he uh, to try to popularize astrology. He uh, wrote a lot of articles on astrology, tried to promote it. So he was absolutely very, very uh, uh, fantastic. But we can see that that one Graha Jupiter being in uh, Nakshatra Sandhi has created uh, this problem for him. And you can see that Jupiter's there with Mercury and Ketu in the 12th house. At first glance, people would get excited. Oh, wow, an exalted Jupiter. So, but here, the fact that it is in Nakshatra Sandhi, it uh, tormented him for almost his whole life. It is Gyati Karakandi horoscope, which means that the larger community or the larger people so his own community people, his own astrology brothers, they were the ones who were responsible, who actually, uh, you know, created a negative picture of him to the public authorities. And hence, these cases were filed against him uh, very strongly. This is the horoscope of another astrologer. He is our colleague. He's also a Germany scholar, and he was a teacher with Devaguru Brihaspati Center. Uh, Zoran Radusavljevic actually hailed from uh, Serbia 
and uh, you can see that his Chandra is in a Nakshatra Sandhi. It is also in a Chandrashtama Dosha, but it is in a Nakshatra Sandhi. So at 3 degrees 31 minutes Karka, so what happens at 3 degrees 20 minutes, Punarvasu ends. Okay, and Pushya started, and so he's born within the first few minutes of Pushya. Now here, and the Lord of the Pushya is Saturn. I did not look at the Lord of all the uh, stars. You can do that. But here you can see that the Lord of the Nakshatra is Saturn. We should also take a look at the Lord of the Nakshatra. And you can see that Saturn is in the fourth house with Rahu. It is impacting the Arura. It is impacting the Shukra. Okay, and as I've told you already, there is a uh, Chandrashtama Dosha because Moon is the eighth Lord in eighth house. So Zoran died at a very, very young age. Okay. Uh, he was in his late 30s, I think, when he died. And uh, uh, health is something what caught up with him. He had a very serious health issue. One of the serious health issues was a serious cancer that he suffered in his last days and by which he went. Here, I want to draw your attention to the fact that the moon is in Nakshatra Sandhi. Whenever the moon is in Nakshatra Sandhi, it has a direct impact on health and longevity. So he died, uh, uh, you know, uh, two or three years ago and at a young age. And, uh, you know, it's a very, very big loss to the Jyotish community. But see how that Chandra in Nakshatra Sandhi can be so, so dangerous. So the only request that I'm making to you is you don't need to only now look at Chandra in Gandantas. Look at Chandra in Nakshatra Sandhis and you will get a very, very clear picture. Here is the horoscope of Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford was a very well-known uh, film actor of Hollywood. Harrison Ford, uh, at the age of 71, actually faced a very serious uh, litigation case, all right, when he was shooting for Star Wars and The Force Awakens, because he was the original star, one of the original Star Wars actors. And uh, now when he was filming for Force Awakens, something fell, there was a huge, while he was doing his stunts, one of the props fell on him and he banged against the, he actually hurt and broke his leg, all right? So that was a pretty serious offense as a result of which the uh, body representing the safety of actors sued the production house, which is the Disney production, they were sued. So it was a pretty uh, serious litigation out there. You can see, uh, he is in the border between Magha and Purva Falguni. All right. Uh, so it's at three, 13 degrees, 32 minutes. All right. Of Purva Falguni. In 13 degrees, 20 minutes, Magha has already ended over here. So uh, you can see this, uh, the uh, problem that was created. And you can see that it is in the 612 axis. Rahu is the sixth lord placed in seven there from in the 12th house itself. Now, I'm going to end with the horoscope of George W. Bush Jr. Everybody knows about George W. Bush. Now, what is very interesting about this chart is uh, people usually say it is largely a non-eventful life. Largely, you will not get, uh, you know, people criticizing or talking about uh, his, um, you know, any kind of controversies that he may have had. So... Uh, it's very interesting to know that he has two nakshatra sandhis, okay? One is Mercury and one is Saturn. Mercury is the third lord and Saturn is the seventh lord. Now, uh, 13th, third lord Mercury is in 16 degrees, 44 minutes of Karka. And in 16 degrees, 40 minutes, Pusha ends and Aslesha begins. So he's Aslesha nakshatra just because of that, but he's within the safety zone, as you can see. And then the seventh lot, Saturn, is in three degrees, 24 minutes, Karka. And in 20 minutes, Punarvasu ends and Pushya starts. So this is the joint between Punarvasu and Pushya, all right, given by Saturn, whereas Mercury is indicating the joint between Pushya and Aslesha. Now, what happened to George W. Bush? What was his major criticism that his government faced? That was the entire 9-11 uh, event 
The whole 9-11 event, people criticized him for it. They said that he had too close ties with the Arab financiers and Arab world. And uh, the issue was that. Now you can see that Mercury is third lord. And it's very, very interesting with the Mercury. Laganesh moon has gone to the third house with a Maranakara Sthana Jupiter. What does this mean? When the Lagnesh is debilitated or goes into MKS, it means your brain is not functioning properly. You are not taking the decisions that you're supposed to be taking. So now these two planets are, have gone into the third house, okay, which itself is a problematic thing. So the decisions that he would take are many of them would be wrong. Okay. And then we have the seventh lord Saturn, which is in a Maranakarak sthana and which has gone to the Lagna. This is directly the, uh, uh, the bombing of the uh, World Trade Center that you all faced. So people would at per chance say, uh, you know, but his horoscope does not show any much problem. But the Nakshatra Sandhi points out to us uh, the problems he faced. And that was a very, very major problem. People don't usually talk about George Bush in this slide because we are very talking about other things and his relationship with the Middle East. But actually... Uh, this whole event of the uh, Twin Towers uh, going into flame and the subsequent damage that came from that, the aftermath of that, really, really uh, impacted his life. So uh, I'm going to stop now a little bit earlier and I will take questions. Ten charts is quite a bit, I think. Thank you, Salvani. Um... I would love you to continue, actually. <laughs> it's fascinating. Um, um, there is, um, well, I think there's two questions. Um, uh, Rosario, ex-Prince Harry renounces title and royal inheritance. Um, question mark, exclamation mark. It's still, in, it's still sixth in line to the throne, I think. So um, um, I don't know if he's renounced anything, but he's not allowed to do royal duties. But um, I don't know if you have any comment. But um, I, yes. think he's, I think he's still in line, sixth in line to the throne. I mean, it, it's a constitutional thing. Yeah, just walk away from it. Um, you know, yes. they, 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 yeah. they have to yeah. they have the yeah. duty. They, they can't just walk away, I don't think so. My understanding is he's still sixth in line to the throne. Oh. I've, I've just, just checked it. So if you want to comment... Yeah, I would definitely like to comment because uh, the reason also why um, I followed all this very carefully, you know, I'm a student of political science. So I really got to see a lot of things about constitutional monarchy. And, uh, you know, uh, many people in India comment is that partly our system is like the UK, that we have a, a our president is like a titular uh, head and uh, you know the real power is with the prime minister and it's similar to the British system but it is actually not because uh, this is a republic and that's a constitutional monarchy so the interesting thing is that uh, so when the monarch uh, becomes the uh, you know the person becomes a king uh, in UK uh, and if you have I have watched you know all the events that have happened on TV through the royal family channel and every single event i've analyzed it very thoroughly and uh, uh, you know the accession in all the events you will see that the prime minister is present many cases former prime ministers as well so the prime minister was also a signatory when officially the accession council actually announced him or proclaimed him as the monarch and uh, this thing that you know paul and i were talking about yesterday that uh, he was uh, that the prime minister is very scared uh, that uh, he may open his mouth because he was a um, climate change uh, uh, sort of a, a great environmentalist and climate change protagonist. He attended all the COP uh, uh, conventions so that he should not, because once he's a constitutional head, though he can advise the government, so he has audiences with the prime minister, he cannot actually ever have any say, uh, uh, you know, on the running of the country. And he's not allowed to uh, voice any political opinion. And so they are very scared that if he goes to COP27, he's such an advocate of climate uh, change, he would actually um, uh, say something. This is what King Charles I'm talking about. He would actually say something. Now, the thing to go for it is that when Queen Elizabeth very drastically uh, uh, lost her father 
when he was only 50, I think eight years old or 52 years old, he suddenly died. And she suddenly became queen at the age of 25. So from age 25 to age 96 or 70 years, she was queen and she molded herself. Whereas this person is just the opposite. For King Charles, 70 years, he was heir apparent. So he didn't have to mind his P's and Q's. So he was very happy talking about environment and climate change. And suddenly for him after 70 years to control himself, people and mostly the prime minister of UK is very, very iffy about that. All right, now, so what happens in the constitution monarchy, the prime minister or the cabinet, the privy council, which is headed by the prime minister also, I think, uh, they have a say as to who can be the successor. This was a very important uh, uh, thing for me that I learned. So they do have a line of succession, but if uh, the Privy Council, the government, the cabinet actually, the cabinet and the prime minister feel that they don't like the person, like suppose they, Prince William is the uh, next in line, he's the heir apparent. And if they don't like him, they think he's unsuitable, they can actually intervene and change and say, we don't want him, but we want you know, one of the other who's in third in line or fourth in line. So very interestingly, the British government has a say who can be, uh, you know, the king or the, the successor. It's a very, very interesting thing. If it's a position which has no political weightage, then why are they having a say in that? Now, coming to Prince Harry, it's very interesting because Prince Harry had issues much, you know, people try to malign his wife, his wife, maybe whatever, but he had issues from long before. He, just like Prince Andrew's call, what is known as a spare in the royal family. So now King Charles is the king, right? Now the heir apparent is his eldest son, Prince William. And the one third in line will be his son, Prince George. So now as long as George is a child, it's fine. But as moment George crosses 18, he becomes an adult. So what happens, uh, Harry gets thrown off the, uh, 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 the succession line more and more and more. Now, he, he was getting jittery because you know he felt he had no standing and a whole bunch of things happened. They created a narrative by which they wanted to show that they were distancing themselves from the royal family. So even when the queen was inviting him over to Scotland and all that, they were not visiting because that disturbed with the narr narrative apparently. And uh, when they said that they want to leave the royal family, they were told that then you cannot do any more royal duties. Uh, you lose all your military uh, uh, positions as well. You cannot wear the military uniforms also. You cannot have ER, you cannot do anything. He was just allowed to wear the medals on a civil suit. So of course, so he's nowhere in line. Now they're all waiting to see that what the present king, because the present king has not yet, he's just become king and he's just taken a break from his mother has passed away. They're waiting, what is, they're expecting a big shuffle. So what Paul is saying that if suddenly something happens, uh, then Harry is still sixth in line. That is what they are saying. But sixth in line only because, you know, George is very young. So the moment the heir apparent son, Prince George, crosses 18. Then it will be him and his line. Harry is nowhere in the scene. And also, if today the prime minister and cabinet step in and they say that, no, we don't want him because he's problematic, okay, uh, then he will not be. Now, those who are royal watchers and they actually read things between the lines, they say that, you know, in the royal website, his picture has been bumped down. Earlier, it would be, uh, you know, the Prince of Wales, I mean, uh, King Charles who was Prince of Wales then, then Prince William, then Prince Harry, and then the children, et cetera, et cetera. Now he's put right at the bottom. He and uh, Prince Andrew have put in the, right in the bottom of the succession line, though technically they've not written, but they go a lot about symbology. All right, so even their cousins, the Queen's cousins, who's the Duke of Gloucester and the Duke of Kent, he's also bumped higher up in the row. So they are thinking now they, these announcements are going to come. So it's very unlikely that he is going to come up. So as I said, the king himself will make and 
the cabinet and the prime minister, the Privy Council has a huge say whether they're going to accept him or not. And that is the interesting thing about constitutional monarchy, you know, so they can say they can say that we don't like him. So he is not doing any duties. His inheritance is also not there. Definitely. He doesn't get money anymore. They gave him one bunch of money. That's it. That's why when they went over there, they actually ran away. So he's signing up these deals with Netflix, with CBS, with Oprah Winfrey, with Penguin for book deals and interview deals. So these interviews with Oprah and all were signed long before they left UK. So these are little money making things. They charge a huge amount of money. I mean, come on. I'm Prince Air and heir through the throne or, you know, grandson of the monarch or son of the monarch. I mean, he would have charged huge amounts. So that is the source of income. And he's doing that because he feels he's nowhere in the line. He's nowhere in this. So there is no inheritance. And they put the, the monarchy put the foot down that, okay, if you don't want the thing, then you don't get the perks. You don't get to use, you don't get the money. You don't get anything. Okay. So I don't think Paul that he is going to, uh, I feel the cabinet would not allow since they have a say also. Neither will your present monarch do it, neither will the cabinet do it. And point six is a long way off. Because moment, the moment William also becomes king, then George becomes, and his siblings becomes, then George's children become. So Harry gets bumped up more and more. And this is precisely what happened with Prince Andrew also. So they are what in your royal language is called spares. So as they get more and more bummed down, they have insecurities. But Harry's whole thing is hugely financial, hugely. Okay, I hope that kind of part answers to your question. Yeah, very comprehensive. Thanks. I noticed. I think in uh, I'm not sure if it was Denmark or Sweden that the uh, they're trying to trim down the monarchy. Right. Well, right. she's lying there, and I won't be surprised right. if something similar happens here. I think if Harry yes. ever ever came to the throne, I think there'd be a Absolute up for. <laughs> yes, yes. But we don't, we don't want that. Um, so, okay, um, we're getting towards the end, but uh, two people have asked a sort of similar question. What is the span of Natchatra Sandy in Ireland? Oh, yes. yes, yes, yes. I said it's the last degree uh, of degree. the Natchatra, that last degree, okay? Uh, it can be the first degree of the next nakshatra and the last degree of the uh, this nakshatra. That is the last degree of the nakshatra as well. So that's why I have written down that if you see that they are only the difference is coming in minutes. So if you see that 23 degrees, 20 minutes, hasta is ending and Chitra is starting and his uh, Prince Harry's Venus is in 23 degrees, 28 minutes, which means just eight minutes, just eight minutes. So minutes is really, really minor. Just eight minutes, it's uh, into the new nakshatra. So it's actually though, technically you can say uh, that uh, it's in the, uh, in Chitra nakshatra, all right, but really it is, it's a borderline between Hasta and Chitra. It's a no man's land between Hasta and Chitra. I'm gonna show you a few more. Uh, look at this in uh, King Charles's case, as I showed you, here it is just by five minutes. So 23, 20 Hasta's ending, right? And he has it at 23, 15. I'm gonna scroll back and look at this. It was just the last, so it's the difference in minutes. It's always the last degree. Here it is. 13 degrees, 20 minutes, Mula ends, right? And 13 degrees, 30 minutes is where he is in Purva Ashara. So where are you in Purva Ashara? He is in the Sandhi of Purva Ashara and Mula. Just the gap between 30 minutes, uh, 10 minutes, right? So it is within the degree, the difference is happening. Even with Lord Alfred Tennyson, you can see 630 and 640. Now, I had some other examples where the difference was even minor. Uh, this was eight minutes. Um, look at this, Prince Andrews, right? Look at Prince Andrews. That is really, really in the Nakshatra Sandhi. So we see at six degrees, 40 minutes, Dhanishta is ending and Shatabhishaj is standing, starting. So his son is in 42 minutes, six degrees, 42 minutes, Shatabhishaj. So 
when we say at six degrees 42, 40 minutes, Dhanishta is ending, and at six degrees 40 minutes, Shatabhisha is starting. But actually, that is the no man's land. Just when we talk like talk about the Sankranti, that's actually a no man's land. They are neither here nor there. Technically, because it's 42 minutes, it's falling into Shatabhishaj, but it's just at that junction between Dhanishta and Shatabhishaj. So the qualities of that uh, nakshatra would come in. Now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Dhanishta is ruled by Mangal, right? Now, see this Venus-Mars conjunction in the seventh house. Venus and Mangal is supposed to be uh, some kind of a rape yoga, right? We say that it's like for rape is often having that yoga. It's of height of sexual uh, irregularities. So he has Venus and Mangal, if you see right here together in the seven thousand Mangal exalted and Mangal is the Lord of Dhanishta Nakshatra, right? So see how the Lord of the Nakshatra is very, very, very crucial. Look at Prince. I, I find Prince Andrew's example very poignant as to what happens. Really, some this was the whole life really gets kind of screwed. So, Mang, so you can see Mangal is also the tenth lord. So Surya is the planet. So he he not only lost, just like uh, our friend Prince Harry, for him also his Venus was the tenth lord. So he loses all that. For him also, he loses that whole thing about royalty. But you will see that is the second lord. And what is the second lord, second house? Second house is to do with family. His family shunned him. They, and it was very obvious, you know, during the Duke of Edinburgh's funeral, people did not even look at him and talk to him. They talked to him a little bit in the present funeral of, uh, you know, Queen Elizabeth. But in the Duke of Edinburgh's funeral, they did not even look at him, his connection with his family. I mean, and I think even though the Queen was so fond of him, the fact that you were, a, uh, you indulged in uh, child abuse and sexual abuse and things like that, it was absolutely horrific to them. Really, really horrific to them. So you see Surya in that and the Lord of uh, Dhanishta is Mangal which has gone over there. Have you seen this? It's very, very interesting. Very interesting. Whereas, and it's just by two degrees this is happening. Whereas if you come here to Prince Harry's case, again, that Shukra is uh, the 10th Lord. And what I really found interesting is that Harry's Venus and King Charles's Venus are on that same nakshatra sandhi in Virgo. They do, though there are borderlines between two nakshatras, one is uh, in Hasta and the other is in Chitra, but it's in that Hasta-Chitra juncture. So literally that Sandhi is affecting each other. The relationship with Harry and Charles is the real, real uh, crucial thing out here. Very crucial. And we saw in King Charles's case also, Mars was, you know, in that uh, Jeshtagandanta, remember, 10th Lord and 5th Lord. So, and then we see his Venus is in that Sandhi and that same. His is 23 minutes, 28 degrees, and I think his is 23 minutes, uh, uh, 15 degrees. So he's in Hasta and he's in Chitra, but both are in the Hasta-Chitra uh, kind of a border. So it would be very yeah. interesting to study more on that and look at more at Mars. So yes, if you want to look at Mars, definitely you can see that Mars and Ketu, there is a kind of a pisach out here. Mm -hmm. Okay. The fourth house. His fourth house is hell. He goes himself, he becomes Visachik. They say that he misbehaves. He's like a real tyrant and he misbehaves. And long before his wife came in, that was his nature. He really is a little demon running around the palace. <laughs> they have the, uh, the royal staff have a have named themselves a club called the, the Sussex Survivors Club. Those who have survived the Duke and Duchess of Sussex because they had a tyrant. They were such a tyrant, they, they pushed old hands, old guards at the palace. They resigned because they couldn't deal with them. So badly behaved was he. And this is complete. So they say it was a reaction of his, I mean, okay, his mom and this and that, but mostly because uh, very insecure of where his future lay. And there he kept on probably thinking that, you know, if his mother was there, this wouldn't have happened. Mother was there, that wouldn't have happened. You know, that kind of a thing. Very interesting case. That's why I took all three of them in a row, you know? Yes, it's fascinating. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I have uh, sat in at seven seconds of a Libra, never mind minutes, after, San, after Sanjay um, 
corrected the chart for me, so uh, I've had a few problems, but we'll pass over that. Uh, there's a, a few more questions. We'll have to be very quick. Uh, no, I'll take uh, quick. Um, does the intensity of the issues caused by this also depend on the nature of the Nakshatras in Sandy? Yeah, 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 yeah. That yes. is exactly what I had uh, uh, mentioned yeah. right in the beginning. I gave the example of Shatabhishaj that, you know, Varuna is the Devata and you can have problem from water. If it's a fiery nakshatra, you can have problem from asphyxiation from smoke, nature of the nakshatra. That's why I said that, you know, Visti is going to be talking about nakshatras. You will pick up on the natures of the nakshatras, make a table and use it when you see uh, uh, nakshatra sandhis. And uh, it's very, very uh, uh, important. I I'll give you my example. I I told you my mangal is in zero degrees zero minutes of Pritika. Actually, it's in a Rashi Sandhi. It's zero degrees zero minutes of Taurus. Uh, so in a uh, Rashi Sandhi and in Kritika Nakshatra, it's a ninth lord and uh, Kritika is a very fiery sign and I have problems with fire more than once. So uh, it's very problematic and it damages the houses as well. So yes, you have to see that. And remember when it is a nakshatra sandhi is far worse than a rashi sandhi or a bhava sandhi. Nakshatra sandhi is really bad because it's a severe bayou affliction and it completely uh, takes uh, your mind, you know, the vayu afflicts the mind, the torment is in the mind. That is what you're afflicting. If Chandra is there, then it's more towards life and things like that. But of all the others, it is a torment to the mind. That is why I did the Mithunjai Mantra three times to say Mithunjai, uh, you know, the Lord of the Vayu Tattva, Rudra Deva, Mithunjai really is the remedy for this. We must do lots of uh, Mithunjai Mantra when we have any severe, uh, you know, these uh, Nakshatra Sandhi doshas. Yeah, yeah Chris, Christine, we'll have to end in just a second, but. Uh... Yeah. Uh, Christine's asked about uh, if you can mention more the Sunday table. What are the other Sundays in the table of Dr. Sri Jyoti Star? Oh, okay. So this actually, um, uh, it talks about all kinds of Sundays, but what I'm looking at, I'm looking at NK. If you see here, let me take this. If you see in the Sunday table, you can type in Sunday table, you'll get it. Yeah. And I'm looking at nakshatra because nakshatra is the most important. That's why I'm looking at the nakshatra table. Now, in this nakshatra table, you pick up a figure which is in purple. All right. It can either be zero point something or it, I mean, a point zero something or it can be 59 point something. And that you pick up, then that planet you can see out here and see which uh, nakshatra is it in. Because otherwise for you to sit and hand calculate everything is going to be very, very difficult. It's a very uh, a long task. So, so Andrew's made it very, very easy for us. Uh, Navamsha Sandhis really don't uh, matter. Uh, Lagna Sandhis can matter, but Lagna Sandhi is, as I said, uh, unless you're very sure of the time, which can happen in our charts, but not of famous people. Uh, Lagna, you can see that by minutes the Sandhi is changing. So Lagna Sandhi can show severe head injuries and things like this. That's not great. But Nakshatra Sandhi is what you should focus on. So NK's nakshatra, you see the number which is written in purple and I see this is Venus. Then I come down to the data and I see Venus is in Hasta in 23 degrees, 15 minutes. Then I know that Hasta ends at 23 degrees, 20 minutes. So by five minutes, there is, it's in that nakshatra sandhi. So that's the way you get it. Okay. Uh, any remedies for nakshatra sandhi? I just said it. It's you. It's Vayu affliction. Of course, you can yeah. worship the Devat of the Nakshatra, but the real affliction, it's a Vayu affliction. So, Mrityunjai Mantra. Lots and lots of it. Okay. Someone's asked again about the parameters for Nakshatra. I think it's one degree, is, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's within yeah. the last degree. And actually, see, the Sandhis are following in minutes. It's a following okay. in minutes, literally in minutes. Right? I've shown that. That's why I made a point to write that out in each of the charts and the examples that I did. So I will get a clear idea. Okay, I'm going to have to draw the line there because the next lecture is about to start in a minute. So, yes. uh, Sabani, I'm so grateful for the uh, great knowledge uh, that you provided. It's a wonderful thing. And uh, I think everybody appreciates everything you've done. And uh, coming in and giving us two lectures, two wonderful lectures. So uh, I'd like to express my uh, uh, deep 
uh, gratitude for your knowledge and for coming along to the conference these past two days. Thank okay. you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank it's you. my honor to speak for the uh, Theological uh, Society. And thank you again for inviting me. Namaste. Namaste.